Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And uh, it's been a while since I've done a White Sox update, and so I've got one for you now. And basically the reason that we haven't been doing a White Sox update lately is because there hasn't been that much to update. No one in their right mind would bet against the Chicago White Sox. But as you may or may not know, the arbitration deadline came and went and uh, the White Sox had two non-tendered players um, in their group and those were Carlos Rodon and Nomar Gar uh, Nomar, not Nomar Garcia pair, but Nomar Mazzara were non-tendered by the White Sox so they will no longer be on the White Sox team um, they did sign Jace Fry, though, to a one-year, $862,500 contract. So, Jace Fry will be back with the club, and everybody else was tendered a contract, um, or had one. So, um, it's going to be, uh, goodbye Rodon, and goodbye Mazzara. Now, Mazzara had a pretty I'm going to say it's, it was a pretty bad year for him. And really, he hadn't been that impressive like the last year or two before the White Sox got him. Um, so I don't know. Maybe they were thinking maybe a change of scenery. Maybe he's, you know, he was just in a bit of a slump for the last couple of years. I don't know what they were thinking, but they got him. Um, they traded for him. And then um, he had a, a pretty dismal last year. Um, and Rodon, of course, has really never lived up to the hype and the expectations that he had since he was the uh, number three pick in the uh, draft, the year that he was drafted. And, uh, and oh, by the way, the number four pick that year by the Cubs was Kyle Schwarber, and he was also non-tendered by the Cubs. So... I don't know, kind of a crazy thing going on there. Um, and and also, uh, the the Cubs were apparently on record as saying, you know, at the time or or shortly thereafter that draft, that they would have taken Rodon if the White Sox hadn't right ahead of them. So anyway, but both of them are non-tendered and will not be uh, playing on the. White Sox and Cubs, respectively. So that's the two guys that will not be back that we know for sure with the White Sox. They are um, working on a contract with um, Giolito, and hopefully they will arrive at um, a number that um, makes Giolito a White Sox pitcher for quite a few more years. Uh, the coaching staff is going to be um, the bench coach. Uh, most of the mo most of the coaches are going to be back. McEwing is coming back. Daryl Boston's coming back. Um, uh, Menachino will be back as the uh, hitting coach. Uh, but the bench coach will be Miguel Cairo, who was on LaRusse's coaching staff when he managed the st louis cardinals and um and ethan katz will be the new pitching coach so we'll see how that works out um apparently he's already got them on throwing the pitchers on uh, throwing programs so he's you know taking the job seriously it's good to see um so that leaves us with just some speculation what's ahead you know, free agent signings, um, Springer. I did an earlier video where I jumped the gun a little bit and said that Springer was going to be signed by the White Sox. He may still be, but um, he doesn't seem to be in a hurry to sign with anybody. So we'll see what happens on that front. Uh, Trevor Bauer, you know, I mean, they could use Trevor Bauer, certainly. Um, but it's going to cost them a lot of money to get Trevor Bauer. 
probably going to cost them a lot of money to get Springer. So, uh, but they are apparently willing to spend money, and you have to believe that La Russa would not have taken the job had he not um, been assured that the White Sox will spend money in free agency. Let's just hope they spend it wisely. So how about trades? Well, they could work on the bullpen, so they should go out and possibly make some trades or some free agent signings of relief pitchers to put in the bullpen. Um, they'll be a little less expensive than starters. Uh, maybe they should trade for Lance Lynn. That's a possibility. You know, go out and uh, trade for Lynn, put him on the staff. Um, especially since Rodon is not going to be a, a, one of your options any, anymore. Um, not that he was a great option if he didn't turn himself around. So, so we'll see, you know, what they do. Uh, I will try to keep up with what they are doing and what they're planning to do and who they trade for and who they sign in, in free agency. But it's kind of starting off uh, a little slowly like... Um, like a couple of years ago did the free agent period a couple of years ago haven't been any real big splashes at least that I've heard of big huge free agent you know signings by different teams so um, and apparently yeah I mean you know and you got to believe that with the virus going around and causing problems for sports teams and leagues teams are going to be that much more tentative about handing out huge contracts to players when they don't really even know what the future holds. So uh, as far as, you know, um, allowing fans back into the stadiums and uh, where the TV contracts are going to be headed. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty, uh, pretty uncertain time ahead. So that's probably, uh, contributing to the slow signings of big name players that are available. So that's about all I got for right now. I just want to let you know what I know, a few tidbits on the White Sox front and uh, see what happens. Maybe we'll end up with Schwarber and we can keep him in Chicago. Who knows? But uh, what do you guys think? You got any ideas about who the White Sox should sign? Um, who Have you heard anything that they intend to or they're talking to somebody or uh, some buddies? Um, or have somebody on their trade radar? Um, any information is uh, greatly appreciated. But for right now, that's it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.